on this video we're going to get our hands let's see we're going to get on hands-on programming and coding i hope you came prepared just get your laptop get a bottle of water and just sit back and relax as we go into the video hi guys it's your favorite tech youtuber my name is promise ak and here on this channel we help professionals navigate through data sciences artificial intelligence or any other technological advancement that may come up in the future if you're new here you're so welcome welcome to the family make yourself feel at home by going through the previous videos we have so that you could understand what the channel is about and get up to speed to what we're doing today to my returning subscribers thank you so much thank you for always coming back you are the best in case you missed my previous video when i talked about programming different programming languages and why we chose python and the previous one before that where i told you on how to install anaconda or everything you need to begin coding make sure you go watch it i'll put a link in the description box make sure you pause this video and go watch that first before continuing so that you are able to follow through yeah before i will go in um, into details we're going hands-on and sometimes this video might be too long so i'd like to know in the comment section what you think is the appropriate length for our videos because i don't want to do something too short at the same time i don't want to do something too long so let me know what what's what's the length you think is appropriate for these videos and also some of these videos can go very long so i might decide to break it into two just in case you see me using the same outfit the same thing the same um, background it's just i just had to break it down because it was getting too long i hope you enjoyed it so i'll just go maybe touch a brief of what we did the last time so and in installing after installing your packages to open a jupyter notebook now you should already know why i prefer jupyter notebook to others i talked about that in the video i, I talked about installing anaconda to launch your jupyter notebook just go to your search bar and type anaconda you will see anaconda prompt just click on that and you will see after clicking on anaconda prompt you would uh, you see base base in brackets so it shows that it's your base environment that is active remember i told you on how to create a new environment yeah so you use your conda to create so now we're going to say conda remember conda is our office manager or our office assistant so conda activate environment python so my own is env underscore python that was a new environment that i created so you could call that on and just say conda activate and you press enter you see that the next and you see that the environment python is in bracket to show that it's that environment that is active so when you've navigated to the environment that is active you could just type on jupyter notebook so it opens your jupyter notebook in your browser so from when you get into your browser then you could navigate to the file you want so mine was i was remember i said mine on my desktop so i have this folder you could call your folder anything you want then under the folder you could create new so when you go to your top right you see upload you see new to create a new python to just click on python to create a new python notebook so for me i'll be using the notebook i was used i created the last video so that's my first python notebook so the first thing we, i talked about this in the last video learning a language for you to learn a language you want to know about the terms in the in the language you want to know about the data types you want to know about functions and best practices so you see my cell block here it's uh, you could change whatever so if you come up here you see markdown and code so code is for example you want to write out a code but a markdown is when you want to write out like a text you don't want to run it as code because if it's a code and just write something it, it returns an error so just change it to a markdown then you could just put you so you could use your hash key your hash symbol to kind of specify headings so hash one hash just maybe a, your editing one so if you are using microsoft for example you have your editing one sending tools and the rest of it so hash one hash shows this is heading one if you use two hashes you make it shows like it's two um your second heading 
so on that day you will have under our learning language you have terms we have data types we have actions and we have best practices like i said and to specify bullet point because i want this to be bullet points i just use one asterisk so to specify then when you're done writing just press ctrl and enter ctrl enter not just enter just takes you to a new line ctrl enter just kind of runs that that block of code but in this case it's a markdown so it just gives you so you see the change when i do ctrl enter so if you're using a macbook so you just do command enter yeah or if you if you don't want to use that you could just use so click on that run so you see this play button at the top but you could just click on that it still runs the code for you first um, t um things we need to do right to learn is what are the terms involved in python so the first i want to say is variable what are variables variables are used to store information or used to store items so i could just say x equals to two it gives me that i'm declaring a variable so when you want to specify or create a new variable it's called declaring the variable it's called variable declaration now i've declared that my x is equals to two so i'm telling my computer x o is two so whenever i call x you should give me two so i call x equals to two so you could also overwrite your variable so i say x equals to two now i'm re specifying x is equals to 12 plus 5 that's 17 so when i call x again it shows it's, it's as overwritten what i had initially remember my x before was two so now my x now is 17 so if, when you are writing your code be sure that you don't overwrite your code so now i can also specify my y is equals to seven and can specify my x my z equals to x plus the x times y it gives you like seven times 17 i hope that makes sense so another thing you should know that is your variables are case sensitive these i have i specified small letter y now i'm calling capital letter y how how manage y so that's why it's returning it as an error say why your capital letter y is not defined so we could just go and update what we have so variables are used to store information assigning or creating a variable is also called the variable declaration you could use letters digits or underscores to in your variable names and their cases so an underscore i could just say my name is equals to promise for example so i'm using my underscore you could also use numbers so if you use number at the first you don't use numbers at the beginning of your variable declaration it has to be inside or at the end if not it will return an error so my first name promise i can specify my second name is precious you know a lot of people call me precious i don't know why but yeah I, i've accepted the name as precious and i can always call my name and blah 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 it gives me so the next thing we're going to talk about is data types this video is so fast for you you could pause and go over it again so i don't, I don't want it to be too long trying to spend time typing so if it's too fast feel free to pause practice whatever i've said and go over it again next thing we're going to talk about is data types there are different types of data we have integers we have floats we have strings we have bool which is called a boolean or we have list we have tuple we have set and we have dictionary so integers and numbers so just see pick any number that the computer recognizes that as integers so for example i specify my x equals to two so if i print type x it shows that my x is an integer so if i put okay type 10 for example it also shows that as an integer the next data type is float floats are decimal so when you, when you see anything decimal you see it as float so you see why it's equals to 12.0 so me specifying is 12.0 shows that it is a float so if i print my type y it shows that as a float the next data type is string so we're going to specify what are so what are strings strings are letters so i didn't mention that okay if you notice that in my code block when i write integers and numbers i use the hash key so that shows comments called commenting because if i don't comment that out if i run my code it's going to the computer want to run it as a code and it does not understand what integers and numbers are commenting out your code the code parts you don't want the machine to run it's very important because so that you don't you can use it to explain what your code is doing so if i put float at decimals i use the hash key it shows that computer don't run this part this is more like 
a an explanation of what I'm talking about. So strings are letters. They are specified using single or double quotes. You could either use a single or double quotation for that. So I can write my name is premise. My son name is AK. So you notice that in both of them, I use different. Um, I use different quotes. One of them I use single. By the time I print type, so you notice that when I want to write, I use print before putting the type because in with Jupyter notebook, it just runs only the last one. So if I use only if I don't put print, it prints out only one thing. But if I put print to it, print out the two things just to pre print out this. Or else, if you don't use print, it just calls out only the last. So if I change the print to just type, it just prints out strings. It shows so name. But with the previous shows that both of them are strings, anyways. So it depends, it depends whatever you want to use, single or double quotation. So why it's good to know about both? For example, if I'm writing. So if I use my single quote, for example, to write something, I want to write my, I am. Um, so it it returns an error because it's, you have that um is showing that that's a quotation and it thinks it's the end. You'll be expecting another end. So if you want to write something like with apostrophe inside your sentence, you could just use double quote and use the single one inside. So it should show that they are different things. Yeah, that makes sense. And next data type is bulls, booleans. These are true or false values. So you could specify if I, if I type bull, for example, you see it's already a lighting green. By the time you type something and it's already a lighting, it means that it's something, it means something in Python. And one of the good practices with Python is those things that mean something in Python, don't use them to declare your variable. For example, I can say true is equals to something. It's overwriting what the uh, computer knows as true already and it kind of messes it up. So one of the good practices is don't use some of those um, terms that are already being used in python try to create new data types so if i specify my z it's equals to true so you notice that the first item is in cap logs and the second w is equals to false by the time i print type z it tells me that it's a bool then type w is also bool so the next thing i'm going to talk about now is list i do not intend for this video to be too long so I'm going to end this video here and continue on the next one. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. So I hope you are able to follow through. The best way to learn is to follow through. If you have any questions, you have any, just please put them in the comment section. In my next video, we're going to continue from where we stopped.